as it should be the case for all of your applications running in production, restricting the access of the Airflow UI is extremely recommended. In this video, we are going to discover the different steps to follow in order to set up the authentication system. Let's get started. From your code editor, check that you are under the section airflow-materials slash airflow-section-9 and open the file airflow.cfg in mount slash airflow. From there, look for the parameter authenticate under the section web server. As you may guess, this parameter is used to enable the authentication of Airflow. Meaning, accessing the UI will be allowed only if you have a user account with a login password set. So define the parameter to true. Then we have to add a new parameter just below in order to indicate the backend that will be requested for authentication. Type auth underscore backend. equals to airflow.contrib dot auth dot backends dot password underscore auth Like that. As you can see here, multiple backends are actually available with Airflow. If you copy this, then from your web browser, paste the value, enter, then click on the first link. Here you got the different backends that you can configure, such as GitHub, Kerberos, LDAP, and so on. By the way, if you want a video about one of these backends, don't hesitate to reach me. Alright, back to the code editor. We can save the file and open the docker file under the folder docker slash airflow. When we want to set up password authentication with airflow, the passwords will be hashed by using the module bcrypt. bcrypt is a password hashing function in order to encrypt your password in a very secure manner. I won't go into the details here since it's a bit technical, but if you are interested, don't hesitate to take a look at the bcrypt hash function. In order to make available this function, we have to install a new package on the container running Airflow, which is flask bcrypt. So just below a pip install command, like here, type pip install. flask dash bcrypt If you don't do this, the web server will throw you an error indicating that the package is missing. Ok, save the file. Everything is set up, we can restart the docker containers running Airflow. From your terminal, execute restart.sh As you can see, since we made a modification in the docker file, docker needs to rebuild the docker image. I'm gonna pause the video right now and I will come back when it's done. Ok, the image is built. Let's type docker ps to check that the containers are running. Perfect. Open your web browser and type localhost colon 8080. Enter. This time, instead of having the usual DAX view, a login and password are required in order to access the UI and go further. But wait a minute, we didn't create any user account, don't we? Exact, time to create a new user. To do this, Airflow doesn't bring a command line tool for creating accounts, but by executing a little script provided from the documentation, we can easily create one. By the way, don't be mistaken by the commands related to the world based access control feature. User accounts created here are not the same when RBAC is enabled. That being said, let's move forward. 
back to your terminal, tap docker exec dash it, copy and paste the container edge of the web server, slash bin slash bash. Enter. OK in your code editor. Open the file generate underscore user in the folder docs. Copy the code. Then start the Python interpreter. And paste the code. Enter. So here we just have created a new user account with the username admin and the password set to admin as well. If you go back to the Airflow UI and type admin for both login and password fields, sign in, and we are logged into the Airflow UI. Perfect. So each time you want to create a new user, just execute the code snippet from the file generate underscore user. Before moving to the next video, there is one more thing I would like to show you. At the beginning of the course, when you discovered the UI for the first time, I told you quickly about the column owner here, and that we will see later how to use it. Well, this is it. Thanks to the owner parameter defined in your DAGs, you can decide to hide those which are not owned by the current connected user. By default, DAGs are automatically assigned to the owner Airflow. If you open the file airflow.cfg and look for the parameter default underscore owner, we obtain the value Airflow as shown here. So if you want to change it to another account, feel free to do it. Then if we look for the parameter filter underscore by underscore owner, and set it to true, only the DAGs belonging to the logged in user will be shown from the DAGs view. Save the file and go to your terminal. Exit the container by hitting Ctrl D and restart the web server by typing docker-compose-f docker-compose-selloexecutor.tml restart web server. Enter. OK, the web server is restarted. Back to the UI. Refresh the page. And as you can see, all the DAGs disappeared. Why? Because no DAGs belong to the user admin we just created. Let's check this. In your code editor, open the folder mount slash airflow slash DAGs. Make a copy of the file marketing underscore dag.py and open it. Replace the dag ID by admin underscore dag, for example. And set the owner to admin. Save the file. By doing this, we have defined that this DAG belongs to the user admin and so should be visible from the user interface. Back to the UI, keep refreshing the page, and at some point, the DAG should pop up. Here it is. Perfect. So you have learned how to activate the password authentication system on your Airflow instance, as well as filtering DAGs by owners so that any sensitive DAG can be filtered. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video, let's take a quick break and see you for the next one.